Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In Virtue Ethics as a resource for business, Robert Audi is going to make some very useful distinctions for us about how we can evaluate a person's character in terms of virtues and also by extension in terms of vices. And we might say, well, why is it important that we care about people's character at all? Isn't it really more about the results or whether they fit the role or whether they just did the right thing, they followed the rules and procedures? And Audi points out that we really can't get away from concerns of character. I mean, we can certainly set them aside with usually bad consequences in the end when we hire the wrong people. And so he tells us that um, any ethical theory in general should help us to identify morally good people. So whether we're utilitarians, whether we're deontologists, whether we're virtue ethicists, whether we're employing you know, an ethics of care or something like that, we do need to be able to specify who counts as a good person and why. Well, there's all these important domains. Hiring. You want to hire people who are actually going to be good in general because they're going to be good for your organization, right? Hiring people who have problematic character traits, that's really playing with fire, isn't it? You might say, well, we need these go-getters who are totally selfish. Don't be surprised then when they're stealing from the company, you know, or abusing things in, in other ways. Evaluating people, this is very important. We have a continual review process in many companies, and you're going to have to do that eventually on the basis of character and character traits. Promoting people, do you want to promote people just because they followed the rules or stuck themselves in a desk for a given amount of time and now have seniority? Or do you want to promote people partly on the basis of uh, not just performance in terms of like meeting, you know, benchmarks or deadlines or, or quotas, but also in terms of being good people. If you don't, you're going to run into problems sooner or later when we discipline people When we say, well, you've done something wrong. What is the sanction going to be? Are we going to fire you right away? Are we going to uh, not only fire you, but, but maybe sue you as well? Are we going to coach you? Are we going to try to work? Work with you to improve on these these sorts of things that is really going to depend quite a lot on a person's character if you want to do it well so we can't avoid what Audi here is calling virtue concepts right he says uh, inside an organization dealing with shareholders regulatory agencies he says doing this is for practical purposes impossible without relying on virtue concepts what are some virtue concepts that he brings up here. Honesty. Honesty is a virtue concept. It's not just a checklist. It's not an on off switch. It is a virtue concept. Uh, fairness, loyalty. And he says, if we cannot identify and describe morally good persons in fairly simple terms, you can't do moral education. And if you can't do moral education, you can't really do coaching because coaching is not identical with moral education, but that's part of it. That's an important part of it as people outside of ethics proper, but within those industries have, have recognized. So he goes on and he says, in order to understand moral virtue adequately, one thing that could be helpful for us to make a distinction is about is omnibus traits and virtues of character. So when we talk about omnibus traits, we mean things that 
are covering everything and we evaluate people in terms of them, they could be ethical or moral or they could be non-ethical, non-moral, right? So what would be an example? Audi doesn't give you any, but we could talk about somebody in terms of aesthetics, right? Um, Moral traits are going to be, or yeah, uh, moral, yeah, moral omnibus descriptions are going to be things like goodness, rectitude, badness, turpitude. We don't usually use rectitude and turpitude all that often. They're sort of sim, you know, you might say stricter sounding ways of talking about goodness and badness. Turpitude can be called evil, if you like, or wickedness, right? So, you know, the, the, the people who set up the Ponzi schemes and defrauded investors, that's turpitude, that's wickedness, right? And we can also go on to talk about particular virtues of character. So he says that uh, a person of rectitude is morally good, but it doesn't specify any particular moral trait. By contrast, justice, fairness, honesty, honesty loyalty, and benevolence are specifically moral traits. And there's a, a correlative relation between these. The omnibus traits allow us to describe a person as a whole, you know, it includes everything, omnibus, that's what omnibus means. And then virtues of character allow us to say this person is good or bad in this way. They're good or bad by being fair or unfair. They're good or bad by being diligent or lazy. They're good or bad by, and we can go on and on and specify additional ones. So that's a very helpful distinction, he thinks. And then another even more important distinction is, and this goes right to the heart of, can we actually evaluate people on the basis of virtue ethics, not just you know, in, in the large sense of their character, but also when it comes down to individual actions. Can we say, well, that was a good action, but it wasn't an actual virtuous action, even though it was in accordance with virtue? And the answer is yes. Aristotle made a fundamental distinction that was followed throughout virtue ethics between people who do the right thing in a particular case by behaving in a way that a virtuous person would, but aren't actually virtuous. As a matter of fact, even a vicious person could sometimes, in some cases, do things that resemble the actions of a virtuous person, but they would be doing it for a completely different reason. In order for a person to be genuinely virtuous, they have to have that virtue established as a habit or a disposition within them. As Audi remarks, people having virtue will naturally act virtuously, though they're doing so is by no means automatic. And this is what Aristotle says, you know, the virtuous person will reliably or characteristically behave in the way that a virtuous person does, and they will also desire to do so. They want to be virtuous. They don't like when other people aren't being virtuous, when they're being vicious. And so that is sort of the pinnacle, acting from virtue. You actually are a loyal employee. You have developed loyalty within you. It is part of who you are. It's become second nature, to use Aristotle's phrase. So you have the established disposition, you have the right reasons or motivation for acting, and then you do the right action. It's also possible to be acting in accordance with virtue and not be virtuous. You don't have the disposition at all, and you do the action for some different motivation or reason. He talks about you know, the person who is establishing a, a Ponzi scheme, for, for example. That's not a good thing, right? But... Um, you could, you could you know, do some things in the course of that that are good things, right? Uh, you know, Madoff was, was taking from some investors to pay off other investors. You could say, well, he was at least acting justly in that respect, but he certainly wasn't acting in accordance with justice, right? There's all sorts of ways in which people will do something that is characteristic of a virtue and virtuous people and then tell themselves that they're good people. They're not. Simply behaving bravely in one circumstance because you're desperate doesn't make you a brave person. You can tell because they're not going to behave that way reliably uh, in other circumstances. But then we have a really interesting middle ground that Audi is bringing up. He says that um, a person can act for the right sort of reason and so virtuously in a full-blooded sense and not merely in conformity with virtue, 
without having a virtue appropriate to acting for that reason. This can occur during moral education in which one can do things for good reasons along the way to developing a virtue, but before succeeding. Moral education could be everything from taking kids and trying to teach them how to you know, be decent human beings and have it be part of their character to coaching sessions that you're going through where somebody who actually has the virtue in question is trying to help you learn how to develop that virtue to doing self-help on your own and engaging in disciplines to gradually become a more and more virtuous person. You're doing so without having the disposition at this point, but you do have the right reasons and that leads to the right action. So there's a third possibility, which is you might say acting from virtue, no longer all caps, but sort of in lower case, which is going to be dependent on other people acting from virtue. And these are different levels of goodness. It's good to act in accordance with virtue, even if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, because it's still a good act, right? It's just not as good as it could be. It's even better to be acting from virtue, but in some way where you don't yet have the disposition. Best of all is to be acting from virtue because you actually have the disposition and you are a just person. You are an honest person. You are a diligent person. You are a loyal person, right? So we can make these moral distinctions. These are all good, but some are better than others. So when to go back to this, when we're identifying good people, who do we really want to have? We want to have people who are acting from virtue. Can we evaluate that in one single interview? Probably not. We have to look at the way in which that person behaves over time and we have to check whether there's a kind of reliability or consistency in their actions. And we also probably want to ask them, why are you doing the things that you're doing? If they say, well, I'm just doing it to make a ton of money or to get people to like me, at best they're acting in accordance with virtue. So this is a very important set of distinctions that can be quite useful in applying virtue ethics in business contexts.